Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day for World 2019. Steven the Go, thank you so much for subscribing. Very, very kind of you to choose you, to use your Twitch Prime subscription on the channel. Thank you to everyone who's here. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really, really helps out the channel. And so we are going to be moving on to Zoro Lycan Weavile, one of my um, favorite decks from a while ago. Um, it has been the deck that uh, allowed me to make day two so far this season at one of the regionals I went to, so I'm really fond of it. And Weavile just adds another layer of power to the deck. So we have Zora GX 210 HP, ability trade, you get to discard a card and then you draw two, which is really nice, and you get to do that for every Zorak you have in play. Righteous Beating deals 20 damage for each of your Pokemon in play, so up to 120, 150 with a choice band, 170 with a Professor Kuku is a really nice amount of damage, a solid 2 hit KO on most things. And then because we are running the unit energy that provides Darkness, Fighting and Fairy, we can use Trickster GX where we choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attack and use it as this attack. There will be hardly any situations in which we choose to use this Trickster GX attack over Lycanroc's um, GX attack because it's so powerful, but you never know. And so 200 HP, Lycanroc GX fighting type, ability Bloodthirsty Eyes, you get to bring something up from your opponent's bench to the active if you want to whenever Rockcroft evolves into Lycanroc. And then Claw Slash deals 110 damage for a solid fighting and two colorless. And finally, Dangerous Rogue GX deals 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So a really solid attack. And because we are running counter game, we can pull this off with a single energy. Now we also have Weavile, which has 90 HP, but it's a non-GX, so that's fine. Has the attack Icy Wind, where we deal 10 damage and we put an opponent's Pokemon to sleep. And then we have Evil Admonition, which deals 50 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. So with this deck, your opponent has to be careful with their bench and be careful with their abilities, or they just have to go all out. But that's something we can easily punish. Then we have the 1-1. One, one, uh, ditto plus a Lowland Mock line. A Lowland Mock allows us to use the ability Power of Alchemy, therefore shutting off all opposing, or rather all basic Pokemon abilities, including ours. We have the Ditto with Almighty Evolution, which can evolve into Mock, but can also become a Weavile, a Lycanroc, or a Zorak, so we're essentially playing an extra of each. And then we have one Marshall with Let Loose and two Tapalelis for support. Now, final, we don't ever have to use Timer Ball ever, ever again, which makes me very happy. We can use Pokemon Communication now, but supporters wise, we are running the Professor Elms engine. We have four of those, and then we have Triple Kuzma, and then we have Double Cynthia, a single Lily, a single Judge, two Professor Kukui to increase our damage output, and Malo to get the cards that we need guaranteed, and a Cerola. Um, Acerola uh, to heal. Yeah, we have four Ultra Ball and four Pokemon Communication, which I feel like is going to be the new standard for Zorak decks to not rely on the flipping of Timer Ball. And then we have a single Field Blower, a single Palpite, a single Rescue Stretcher for recovery purposes and to counter stadiums with Field Blower. Um, and especially tool cards because a skateboard people are using a skateboard like there's no tomorrow So punishing that seems very useful. We also have a black market because we do have the unit energies If at any point you can make it so you can black mark take a black market KO. I mean take a KO with a Pokemon that has an energy um, Either Weavile or Zorak with black market in play and a judge or a Marshadow you might actually be able to um to prevent your opponent from winning because they take one less prize card or they will have to Guzma around this to prevent them from losing. And then we have triple choice band to increase our damage outputs and a single counter gain for um, for the one energy dangerous rogue GX. Four DCs, four unit energies. And so let's jump into the ladder and see what we can do with this deck. If um, Peter Joltek ends up uh, joining the ladder at the same time, we can definitely play against him again. And the Pokesaurs, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. What does counter gain do again? If you are behind on prices, the Pokemon that has the counter gain attached to it costs one less colorless energy to attack with. So if you are behind in prices, uh, Dangerous Rogue actually costs a single fighting rather than a fighting and a colorless. 
or righteous bidding costs a single energy rather than a double colorless. Yeah. So we are going first, we have the turn one elms, the raw elms, which is really, really crazy. And we have double Zorg as well. And I even have the DCE. So to say we are in a great spot would be an understatement. We don't know what we're up against. Hello. We can safely assume it's a Diancy deck at the very least. So Sneasel might take a backseat here. Um, definitely want to bench all of these guys. If it is a baby puzzle deck, then we are going to see why the Vard Field is still probably a very important card, not only as a shrine counter, but also as a way to KO baby puzzles. But we shall see. Thanks so much for the follow, Darlim P6. And yeah, as you can see, we have a huge Zorg here supervising everything. It's actually a Zoro Rock Mirror, which very boldly attaches energy to the Rockcroft. But we actually have the perfect, the absolute perfect setup in order to punish this sort of thing. So my opponent is using the 1-1 one, one, at least of Lucario GX, which is a nice counter to Zorak, but also a really nice counter to Pikachu and Zekrom. Yeah, and this will probably prompt me. I guess I should have attached the energy. There was no, well, there was reason not to enhance Hammer and Switch has been being more popular or is more popular lately okay so here's the thing though i'm not too too worried about it because if we do get counter ko'd by the lucario we can definitely we can definitely as long as we have the malo and whatnot but we can definitely get a return ko i should have not grabbed the rock rock okay I, I guess that's a card i can send back so because I'm going to take a prize and then if my opponent responds with taking two prizes with Lucario, then I can respond with a Dangerous Rogue plus Counter Gain. So I should be trading first, technically. Um, I'll get rid of the Mock. The Mock is not important here. And I actually think I want to Brooklet Heal right now and then now we'll trade the Brazil. So I did all of that in like the worst possible order. <laughs> Um, so pardon me for that Probably did that in the absolute worst possible order and then I could bench the ditto and trade away hmm. I feel like trading away the Sneasel is fine Because I can just bench the ditto having the backup Zoro in case I do lose the Lucario seems pretty good here And so I will attach I will bench the ditto and I will take the KO. So I have backups and all I need is to find a Lele to get me the Malo to get me the counter gain, right? I have the energy already and my opponent immediately promotes a real. So, and he's already benched something else. So we definitely have a good chance to counter KO the Lucario. And I fully expect my opponent to at the very least evolve. And if he benches a Rockcraft, then I no longer need a choice band. Okay, so all I need is Malo. Yeah, all I need is Mallow. My opponent goes for a Cynthia, so now he needs to draw the Lucario plus the fighting in a wrong manner. There's the potential Lucario, right? But it's actually a Zorg. My opponent has the Absolute Tech as well in order to counter Zapdos. So, very interesting deck. Very interesting deck. And we see the Pokemon communication. That will probably be the Lucario here. No, it's another Zorg. So I wonder if my opponent has either Lucario or Fighting and he's looking for the other one. And there's a victory. Yeah, it was going to be really hard for my opponent to recover if he didn't get the return KO, which clearly he didn't. I do like the idea behind using Lucario now because Pikachu and Zekrom is really that powerful. So perhaps... Zoro Lucario now has more merit than Zoro Ligon, actually. There is a potential for that. Um, is my opponent's deck like a Super Tech Zoro Rock? I mean, it seemed like it was Zoro Lycan Lucario, right? Rather than Zoro Lycan Weavil, so not necessarily Super Tech. Um, I had the Alolan Mock, he had the Absol. They're both good against Zapdos. Alolan Mock is more difficult to get out, but it's also more powerful as a way to counter 
some decks. So I wouldn't say it's a super tech Zord rock. It was just a different version than our Zord deck. Okay, so. So, 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 we are not going first this time around. So I'm gonna start the Zorwa. I am going to start the Zorua. And definitely wanna bench the Ditto. Okay, so my opponent starts on Orangu, which is great news for us. Oh, and we're up against Ultra Necrozma. We are up against Ultra Necrozma. Not bad. This will be an interesting matchup. Thank you so much for the follow, Miani Neem. And we see a Coco as well, surprisingly. Do you think Ninetales is good in this stack, MEB? I mean. Ninetales will always be a great card. Yeah, no matter in which deck you play it, you, there will always be a situation in which it'll be useful. Yeah? The thing with Ninetales, however, will be that... Um, my opponent got a Lily for it? No. Oh, he already sent it. Never mind. Did he? Yeah, he did. Um, Ninetales will always be good, but the thing is, like, are you playing... Zork, Lycanroc, Weavile, Ninetales? Ugh, that feels like super, super greedy. A super greedy way to go about it. Um, okay, so... I do want to communication the Lycanroc away here. And I definitely think I want to go after... Or I want to become... Yeah, I want to go after the Elms here. Definitely want to go after the Elms. And we do see the Mallow, the counter gain potentially very useful as well in case we need to um, get a KO on this Ultra Growth Map with Lycanroc's GX move. And so here's the thing, like I'm very, very torn between, um, and Tuzer was surprised, I am very torn on whether I should attach the DC or not. Because here's the thing, my opponent has three cards, the likelihood that this Zorua goes down is not very high. If it survives, then I do get ahead in the energy attachments. If the Zora goes down, then I am behind in the energy attachments. And if I attach the energy to a Rockruff, then it becomes an even better target for my opponent to just Guzma kill the Rockruff. He, if he has the Guzma, then the Zora and the energy survive. So, with all of that in mind, <laughs> I think the energy goes to Zora. And I do have a few options. I have a follow-up supporter, and I do have a few options. Uh, uh, I do have a few follow-up options to get me a KO on the Ultra Necrozma for a single energy. Um, we do see the Tapalele benched. Hola, mi amor. We do see the Tapalele benched. I don't know why, unless my opponent is planning to Lily. We do see a Viridian Forest for another energy, which is the efficient way to go about it. So yeah, maybe I think if you want to play Nine Tails in this deck, then you would not play Lycan Rock, or you would not play Weavile, but you can't play all four, I would say. Playing just one Nine Tails instead of um, instead of uh, the Muck, that could be an option. So you have the Nine Tails. Wait, what? So that you have the Nine Tails option for um, for Ditto. That could be an option. Oh, wow. Okay, so my opponent did have the Kuzma, right? My opponent did have the Kuzma, but he also has a Shrine in play. There's the Instruct. I feel like out of everything, like, why wouldn't you want to take a Knockout here on a Rockruff or on a Ditto? Why would you go after the Lele? I mean, I guess now I need an Energy to Retreat, and I don't even have the Zorg, but I don't know. Not a big fan of that particular play. Um, okay, so 
I definitely want to get a big hit on this Ultra Luzma. So I need a Zork and an energy off of this Cynthia. I get one, but not the other. So I will have to attack here with the Lele. Get some chip damage in. I was hoping to hit for 150. So this would be at 170 finishing the turn and then I would be able to use Lycanroc or Guzma to target something else down and then let the Shrine finish out the Ultra and Guzma on its own. That might be what my opponent ends up doing to this Lele, but if he chooses to do that I do have a Zerola, which is not terrible. But the issue is I didn't get a single evolution. That's the biggest issue in here. Um, Pietro, hello from hello all the way to Italy. Thanks so much for tuning in. What do I think about Jolteon GX with the CGI GX? Okay, so... I did try out uh, Jolton GX with uh, Greninja GX yesterday. I wasn't a fan of the deck purely because it feels like a very slow deck. No matter how you see it, it feels like a very, very slow deck. Um, because you don't have the reliable draw of Swampert for stage 2, or the real. Oh, there's the <laughs> no draw. Um, or the reliable draw from Trade of Zork. And it felt way too slow. To the point where setting up multiple Decidueyes is not going to be easy at all. And that is, I would say, the deck's biggest issue. Okay, so based on what my opponent is using, I definitely don't foresee Choice Band being too useful anymore. Uh, the Kukui, probably not going to be too useful either. So I'm going to get rid of that. I do want to guarantee a knockout. And I do like the Guzma, but I think I value the Acerola a lot more and the non-GX basic attacker as well. So the card I'm going to end up trading will be the Guzma. And okay, so I got a Cynthia, which is very nice. <clears throat> so now we are looking for either a field lower <clears throat> or a black market. And... Honestly, that Alolan Mog could be very good here. Very, very good. Um, okay, so we, we should decide on the Mog. And this deck probably relies on Giratina coming back over and over. At some point, it also should rely on Oranguru drawing them cards. So, I will evolve. Yeah, I will evolve into the Alolan Mog to stop that from happening. And I will take the two prizes in return there we go um purple cliff <laughs> thank you for the good luck wishes but i am not in australia <laughs> I, I find it very flattering that you guys just assume that i'm in australia it would be very um bold of me to be streaming like an hour before the tournament <laughs> um that would be some dedication um as far as i remember internet in australia is not very good so i probably wouldn't be, even be able to to stream reliably but originally i'm in mexico right now i'm not in melbourne well not unfortunately i'm very happy being here it's just i am not at the tournament and um because i think it's type and because i forgot to write down um i forgot to write down my supporters in brazil so i think it's type and etc but we are good we are going to be watching um i should be locked in for the type for germany um, there should be no humanly possible way for me to not get it, so that makes me happy. And then I'm gonna really try hard for the next couple of stipends. Costa Rica was pretty fun. Uh, the community there is super, super nice, super friendly players. I had met a, uh, a couple of them before, but it was really awesome meeting um, everyone over there. Had a great time, and I got some championship points, which was the goal. Um, yeah, streaming 7 a.m. before the event would be some serious dedication. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't go because I forgot to write down my supporters in Brazil, therefore I didn't get any championship points, therefore I didn't get stipend, therefore uh, Australia is too expensive. Um, Orange Rabbits, am I going to do the Cancun plus Panama special event in May? Two special events in the same weekend and flights from Cancun to Panama City are like 170. Okay, so... Orange Rabbits, here's the thing. Like, there's no guarantee that the Cancun special event will be done by Saturday. Yeah, in fact, based on attendance from last season, 
I would fully expect the the Sunday of the special event to have like the the Sunday yeah the Sunday after the special event to have the top eight played out. So I don't think I'm gonna risk it. Like I wouldn't want to book Panama and then not be able to play a top eight or something from Cancun. Um, it's also <laughs> quite a bit of money. I would love to do that, but I don't think it's very viable. Okay, so I do manage to wake up, which is awesome. My opponent only has two abilities in play. So, gonna start off by trading, but if I can get a Lycan Rock here, I might be able to get a knockout on this Ultra Necrozma. Um, 150 plus the Shrine 160. Okay, so what I said before is exactly what's going to happen. Um, having the Ultra Necrozma in the active spot is also pretty nice, and I would not be surprised if this prompts a... Um, a concession from my opponent. Yeah, now this second Sneasel I wish was a rock rock, but we are completely fine. Yeah, we are completely fine. Uh, uh, the shrine is damaging me, but it's also damaging him. If he doesn't counter the shrine, his turn will end at 180, and then I will be able to Kuzma get another KO on probably a Malamar or even the Coco. That might be good to prevent the free retreat option. And I will take three prizes, two of them in between turns. Um, what would you have played? If I was going to Australia, I probably would have played a Zapdos deck. I absolutely love Zapdos. I think it's really powerful. <coughs> I definitely think I would have played Zapdos. Um, Zeter again. I did used to play StarCraft 2 a lot, like I would not miss a single GSL match, I would watch all of the Pro League matches, I absolutely was like, I really want to be a StarCraft 2 pro player, I used to love StarCraft 2 so much. Um, then I like, I faced it out, I hadn't played in a long time, but I, 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 I was always very close to making Grandmaster I think, I never actually did it, but I really loved the game. I really, really loved it, and I wouldn't mind just playing it casually. Yeah? I wouldn't mind playing it casually. Um, the stream should be starting, in theory, in around an hour and a half. I believe they said uh, uh, 5.30 EST, so 4.30 CST and 2.30 PST. Um, Sapto Shrine. Sapto Shrine is what I probably would have played. Yeah? Sapto Shrine is probably what I would have played. You were mega into SC2 for forever as well? Yeah, like I never I haven't even played the campaign of the Protos. Like I bought it, but I never ended up playing it. Um, I haven't found the time to do so, but I know I will um, I will get to it eventually. There's just so many things I want to play. Um, I have I, pending right now, just off the top of my head, I have Final Fantasy. Uh, 15 Final Fantasy 9 that I have right now Final, C Final Fantasy 15 Final Fantasy 9 um, and there was something else uh, Batman Arkham Knight or Arkham City no well the last Batman that got released on PS4 in 2015 and then we have um, Final Fantasy 7 that I also really want to play in March. It's just there's so many games that I want to play and so little time. I have been getting better at finishing games, but okay, definitely gonna grab an Uh But I just I haven't been able to yet. Okay, so because of the I have the Pokemon communication in my hand, I feel like I'm gonna keep the Sneasel in my hand because I'm not gonna be using Sneasel next turn. And my Zoroa should be safe, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be greedy-ish, and I'm gonna go ahead in the energy drops. I could be punished by a discard water aqua patch energy switch, but I'm hoping that won't happen. And hello, Josh. Thanks so much for being here, um, Luis. <laughs> well, you're here now. The Protoss campaign was super good. Yeah, I'll get to that eventually. I guess StarCraft Two, the Protoss campaign, is also something I have pending. Um, I am going to be traveling a lot, so I probably will have a lot of time to <laughs> to finish my backlog of games on the Switch right there. Um, I also want to play uh, Horizon Dawn? Dawn? Horizon? What's the name? For PS4? 
Dawn, Dawn Horizon event or something. Um, I'm actually I've never been interested in Kingdom Hearts actually. I've actually never played Kingdom Hearts. Oh, that's super annoying. Uh, that Jet Geyser is super super annoying here because now I need to find another TCE. Fair play on my opponent right there. Um, I could. Nah. Oh, that's super annoying. That was super, super annoying. Okay, so I'll evolve here, I'll bench, and then I'll Cynthia. Um, not great odds of attacking this turn, but there wasn't much I could do about it. Triple Zorg is definitely how I maximize my odds of attacking this turn, though, so that's pretty nice. Um, we'll be training a choice band. They won't matter too much in the um, damage calculations for Magikarp and Wailerd overall. Uh, the Pokemon communication is probably what I'll end up trading. Uh, or the Rock Rock. Nah, the Pokemon communication feels better. Might need a second Black and Rock ability. And then finally, the Zorua. We should be safe from like a big Magikarp and Wailerd hit. So. We missed the energy, as is expected. Um, I'm gonna save the black market for now, and then we will just pass. Next turn, oh, I can't Kuzma. I can't Kuzma the Wailerd, but I could Kuzma the Poipol if it doesn't evolve. Now, I'll probably, I'm probably better off just KOing Articuno. <clears throat> I'm doing well, big loader, thank you. How about you? Horizon Zero Dawn, that one, yeah? <coughs> that one, I really wanna play. I wanna play God of War as well. Um, is there anything to be said for trading this Nisal and Ultra Bowling for Zorg before Cynthia? Uh, I mean, yes, but this deck, like, take a look, there's already four abilities in play. Yeah, um, Quags are potentially five, so I think Weavile will actually be a pretty big player in this matchup. Yeah. Okay, so the energy is definitely safe for my opponent here. There's no way I can whiff an energy here, though. That's the, the golden rule here. I cannot, absolutely cannot whiff an energy. So, oh, I can use Lycan Rock. Never mind. Okay, so I think it's going to be the Zorg. I won't be able to have a fourth Zorg. One of my Zorgs will eventually go down. But that's okay, right? That's okay. Um, so which Pokemon would I KO here? I feel like I would probably want to KO the Whooper. Because that stops a big Magikarp and Wailerd hit, right? That does stop a big Magikarp and Wailerd hit. And so the Marshadow... Ah, I'm thinking the Rockruff. I'm thinking the Rockruff will be the card I lose here. I'm also considering the judge. <laughs> um, I think it's gonna be the rock rock because Azerola seems potentially good if he keeps cycling the Articunos. So I'm gonna go with a Lycan Rock here. And I'm gonna KO the Whooper. I could get a big hit in on the Magic Urban Boiler, but but that would probably make it so I um I end up losing the Zorg, and I'm really trying to avoid that. I would probably lose this arc next turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and evolve. Um, what are my thoughts on my cargo GX right now? Overall, my cargo GX has always felt pretty underwhelming. Oh, I can use Trickster GX to super splash something. Probably not the best. Um, would using Sonoblast be useful? Probably not. I wanna save my GX attack for a uh, Lycanroc, so yeah, never mind. Just take the KO here. And yeah, I mean, Lycanroc is why it's important is purely because it lets me bypass Articuno's ability. Now I'm gonna have to go through two Articunos, which I don't mind too much, because then if I am able to one-shot Magikarp on Wailerd, I will be a happy camper. Yeah. And now I do that, it's with Choice Band, Kukui, and then either Dangerous Rogue or uh, Evil Admonition. So that's gonna be the late game plan. Yeah, that's gonna be the late game plan plan um Janastasi, i'm not at oceana 
Um, the tournament is starting in an hour, so I definitely wouldn't be streaming an hour before. Um, if I were playing though, I'd probably be playing a Sapdos deck. Your six energy, Picarum just got hit by Cold Crush. Yikes. <laughs> Big rip. Um, hello, Deadly B. You could like and rock the Waylord. Yeah, I can like and rock the Waylord, but I definitely preferred, or it felt much stronger to just KO the Magic Arpan Waylord. And look, now there's five abilities in play, so. I will be using a Serol on this arc. I will be taking it with this guy, and I will be attaching an energy to a Lycan Rock. So now all I will be missing will be the Kukui. Yeah, all I'm missing is the Kukui to just one shot the Magic Arban Wailer GX Tactic. So I'm pretty happy with that. And if my opponent makes me go through three Articunos, then so be it. Okay, so I no longer care about the Judge. We have our plan. The Guzma is probably a tradable card as well. Right? The Guzma is probably a tradable card, but the Mock is much more tradable. Yeah. Oceana does start on Friday. The thing is, they are currently in the future right now. Australia is 17 hours ahead. Yeah, Australia is indeed 17 hours ahead. Okay, so I will attach energy. I will ace Rola to avoid the Articuno getting these two free prizes. On his arc, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be game. I am pretty, pretty sure this is going to be game. Um, I guess I don't mind playing the black market here. Uh, it doesn't help me, but it prevents him from finding an Articuno, a Whooper, etc. Um, well, actually, that was probably a bad play because then I'm discouraging him, or I'm making a card for him to bench a fifth Pokemon, right? Which is what we need. So like a rock GX can GX KO the Magic Orb and Wailer. So that was probably a mistake. That was probably a mistake. That was probably probably a mistake. Okay, so energy on the Ditto is interesting. Energy on the Ditto is interesting. Ooh, there's the Onyx. That Onyx is super annoying. But that Onyx lets me Kuzma. But that's not a KO though. We're 20 short of the KO. We're 20 short, we deal 280 damage. 280 damage. Yeah, today is day one. It's not confusing. They're just, it's time zones, right? Do you like Black Market over Divar Field? I think I like both, but I do see how Black Market is potentially useful in some scenarios. Okay, so Quagsire. Um, Quagsire is tough. Um, okay, Amula, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, I can like and rock GX, but that's not a KO, Deadly B. Magic Urban Willard has 300 HP. If I go Guzma GX against the Magic Urban Willard, then that's 280 damage. And I fully expect my opponent to be playing some sort of um, healing. Right? So. I think my best bet here is probably to use Weavile. Do I? Um, yeah, I think, okay, so this is the plan. I'm gonna use Weavile, and then I'm gonna set up the other rock rough here. Weavile is guaranteed KO, right? Which is good. And by setting up the other rock rough, I also have guaranteed, or not guaranteed, but close enough guaranteed KO'd over there. Now, the way I'm going to do it, however, is I'm going to stretch her first. And I'm gonna put back the rock rough, the marshadow in case I need some, um, some denial. And then I will elms for these three, and then I will start trading. 
I think I'm gonna trade the counter gain. That feels like the least useful card here. And then I will trade the Ultra Wall. No, not the Ultra Wall. I think that's Zorgo actually. Because Lele gets me Kukui. I want to bench Rockruff. And if I need another attack over Zorg, and then I have. Yeah. Okay. I didn't trade the Ultra Wall because that's how I get Lycan Rock. Okay. So now by having these two, well, I would need my opponent to bench another ability. Ugh. I mean, he has three cards in hand, though. My opponent needs, like, a perfect setup. And their black market stayed in play, so my opponent might not even get a KO on the Weavile if that does happen. And if he goes for the Splashing Tower GX attack, which he can't, Towering Splash, sorry, which he can't, he definitely has no way to get enough energy to play, we should be fine. Uh, the Volcanian promotion means two things. Either that's how he's planning on KOing Weavile, or he's going to Guzma KO the Rockruff with the Articuno, and I feel like that would be the right play. The energy does go to the Volk though. And there's the Acrobike. Okay, big loader, so you know how, um, I don't know where, which part of the United States you're from, but some parts like in California, they have one time, and then in the middle of the country, they have a different time, and then in the East Coast, they have a different time, yeah? So Australia, which is on the other side of the world, has a very different time. Yeah, and yes, Janastasia, I can show the list after this game. You're in Canada, okay? So, I mean, the same applies, right? Uh, Queensland, no, that's not, that's Australia. Um, Vancouver has a different time than Toronto, right? You should do more Super Smash streams. I wish I would, I could, the Pokestores, um I heard from my internet provider that they will be increasing the speed of my um, of my internet, which is great. Oh, my opponent does find the stadium to get a prize here. That's okay, because I'm pretty sure we have won the game now. Now we are going to hit for 300 damage. Well, as long as the other Lycan Rock is here, which it might not be. That's the one thing I didn't check, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the communication. And the Lycan Rock is there, the Cuckoo is there, so that will be the game. So I'm going to Lele for the Kukui. He benched extra Pokemon with ability. The extra Pokemon with ability um, doesn't matter because he got rid of the Weavile. Yeah, so it's fine for him to do that. And now we are going to use Lycanroc GX, bring up the Magikarp and Wailerd. We've played the Berserker Kukui, so we have 20 extra damage. And we can Dangerous Rogue for 300 and 3 price cards. There we go. Yeah, there we go. The fact that he benched an extra Pokemon was what um, what made a difference there. Yeah. And Tuskyo, thank you so much, but I'm not at Melbourne. <laughs> I'm very flattered that you guys assume that I'm in Melbourne, but I'm actually not in Melbourne. I am in Mexico right now. Um, OIC is going to start in about an hour. Yeah, that's the announced time of the stream to start. 5.30 p.m. EST, 4.30 p.m. CST, 2.30 p.m. PST. Yeah. Okay, so one last game of Zorolike and Weavile. Melbourne, Mexico, I mean, I guess they both start with M. <laughs> Uh, will you attend Monterey Special? I will if it's... Oh, the thing could move. I will go to Monterey if it changes date. Yeah, I will go to Monterey if it's not on the same weekend as Berlin. Because right now it's scheduled for the same weekend as the European International. If it's changed, then I will go to Monterey. If it's not changed, then I will not go. Yeah. And what time is OIC EST? It's 5.30 p.m. for you. Yeah, it's 5.30 p.m. EST, 4.30 p.m. CST, and 2.30 p.m. PST. What do you think about Venusaur? Is it viable? I think it's viable, but um, I think Blastephalon will still be big enough to the point where it's hard to justify playing it. Okay, so we are going first. We start Zorua, and Pokemon Communication is just so good, because imagine, if that was a timer ball, our hand would suck. And look, we're up against Venusaur. 
but Pokemon communication just always gives you an out. Like now you're playing eight outs to Lele turn one for Elms. There's nothing that um, there's nothing that beats that. It's just that is simply amazing. Yeah. Now we really need to get an attack off on this Celebi and Venusaur. Yeah, and you don't hit to tail. It's like Pokemon communication is such such an amazing card. Um, sending off Mock is going to be very important to shut off the Shamans. Not the Absol, but definitely the Shamans. And this is the matchup where just one Acerola probably will end up hurting us, especially because I priced the Palpan. So we're going to be really strained on our resources. Yeah, in terms of energy, because we're going to have to be playing Kuzma's to bypass confusion. We might just end up uh, risking a few confusion flips here and there. Yeah. Tecuzio, you wish they would have pushed EUIC to May so we have the new set for a tournament. Yep, yeah, I agree. Um, I was very surprised they didn't do that because the Latin American International was on the same on the first weekend for ooh, <coughs> on the first weekend of um, Lost Thunder, and the Oceana International is on the first same week on the first weekend for Team Up. So it would have made sense to have the internationals coincide with. Um, with the sets, but the issue with that, I guess, is um, the issue with that is you want um, you want uh, I mean, rather, the issue is we have four sets every year and there's five big tournaments, right? Um, the four internationals and worlds. So, worlds will coincide with um with um, I feel like I should set up the mock. Nah, never mind. Um, worlds will coincide with the last set, but then Australia, I mean, not Australia, Europe and North America are the ones that don't end up fitting the bill. Okay, I think I'm gonna trade the Kukui. I really need a DCE here. Ah, oh, that's not DCE, please. Pretty, pretty, please. And off, oh, perfect. Okay, so this is a beautiful, beautiful hand. And my GX attack might end up just one KOing one Sylvian Venusaur. And this is the thing, this is what you need to do. You need to apply as much pressure as possible. Healing 20 damage is not that big a deal. As long as I can get another attack off on this Sylvian Venusaur, I should be able to knock it out. Yeah, and I'm gonna try my best to bypass the confusion. Or if he gets multiple shamans, then that could be a problem. Now, Selvian Vincer is actually out of range. And I did get rid of my Professor Kukui. But he does have three Pokemon with ability, so the Ditto might end up becoming um, Weavile. Right? Yeah, 430 CST. One more hour, in one hour. Yeah? Team up is legal for the internet, indeed. How many gods do I have to KO Shaman? I mean, does it matter? I can just use Muck to shut off Shaman, right? I think that would be the the play. But I have two Ligand Rocks and three Guzmas. Oof, my opponent gets a potion, and he found the DC. So we are definitely in trouble now. It's gonna be hard to get a hidden into this, or to get a KO rather. So we are confused. We are burned. 150 plus 80 doesn't do it. 180 doesn't do it either. So that Venusaur is actually safe now. That Venusaur is actually safe from getting KO'd this turn. Um, think... Oh, this one's a tough one. I think it's going to be the judge. Take prizes on them. They are low HP. I mean, if I can, I will. But I think it's situational. I don't think I'm going to be using two Ligand Rocks here. Oh, boy. Okay, so... If I use Weavile, I will never, ever again have Muck. So, we 
this is the play. Busted corner is the play. Hoping my opponent doesn't get... Yeah. No shamans for my opponent. Hoping my opponent doesn't get a Guzma here. Uh, or a way to remove my energy. Gardenia, ugh. Okay. So now that thing is out of range. Gardenia, heal 80 damage. Okay. <coughs> I mean, I don't mind that too, too much. It's not the end of the world, for sure. That Guzma is potentially very useful. I will try to wait the Mars Shadow. But yeah, I would definitely agree that Mock is key in this. Um, I think that's Stretcher. <sighs> With Stretcher and then the Ultra for sure. Okay. So... I generally believe it's Guzma and attack with Zorg here. My opponent can't ever green GX though, for a knockout. Or I could just use Lele, right? It saves the GX. Well, he's gonna ever green GX no matter what. So maybe I hit into the Celebian Venus or GX, this one. The GX attack is so annoying though. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm gonna go after this one. With this orc. Yeah, and then I'm gonna prep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, eighty, two. Yeah, there's no way. I'll put it on this orc, and then we will ride she's beating. Wait for a Kukui and GX Venusaur, but he needs to bench another Pokemon. With Kukui, Choice Band, and my GX, that's only 250 damage, and Sylvian Venusaur has 270, so I need him to bench another Pokemon. Otherwise, my GX won't KO the Sylvian Venusaur. Okay, so we're gonna get three prizes here, right? We are going to get three prizes. So now. Definitely need to keep trading, right? My opponent will not make that mistake, clearly. And he's not gonna use, he's, okay, so I need him to use the Evergreen GX attack here. I need him to use the GX attack to get a clean one shot on his orc, so that he doesn't get to heal. That's the key part here. And I'm probably gonna have to calm it down with the trading after this turn. So this is okay. Oh, I could just field blower actually. No, I need, I want him to use the GX attack. I want him to use the GX attack, right? If I field blower, then he's just gonna confuse me. Yeah, I want him to be tempted to use the GX attack. Lower the tool and Guzma. No, because the evergreen gx attack like if i attack then he heals yeah i think this is fine i want him to use the gx attack right here because then he's gonna put all of this back which is not too useful he has no more healing he might end up benching another thing which is interesting why not acerola because I want to save the Acerola for when it will help me with the confusion. That's why. Yeah, it's like just because I have the cards doesn't mean I should be using them, guys. Yeah. Like Acerola is better. I only have one Acerola, so I have to be super conservative. And I didn't get my Pulpad. See, he used the GX attack, so he can no longer heal. Yeah, and he made the mistake of benching another Celevi and Venus or GX. So now... What I can do is bench something else, use Lycanroc, and get a KO and attack into the Celebian Venusaur. Yeah, and I'm not going to 
You can still retreat, but like I need an Acerola to give me back a DC. It's generally like, why do I need to heal? My opponent has zero cards in hand or one card in hand. If he had a Kuzma, he would, all, he would have already played it. So it's better to save the Acerola for when you will actually heal Confusion. I, I promise you, it's like, it's it's much better to save the Acerola for a more specific situation, yeah? Okay, I guess I will trade. Like, just because you can use it, just because you have like a free turn to use it, doesn't mean you should, and it might be costly to do so. Yeah, Acerola is 100% better to save it, because if I Acerola, I save a DC, so I Acerola get out of confusion, and then I save a DC for a later retreat to also get out of confusion. Yeah, so it's a double thing. If I use Acerola right now, all I'm doing is healing, but I'm not taking away confusion, and I'm not saving a DC. So it would be a very inefficient use of Acerola right there. Crushing Hammer, that's fine. And there we go. Yeah, so it's patience. It's instead of going after the shamans, it's much better to just lock out the shamans. If my opponent hadn't benched that Selvian Venuser, I would have just hit into the Selvian Venuser and the game would have still been over. Yeah, but this was like even more insurance. Yeah. Okay, so Zorlikan, pretty powerful. Um, pretty, pretty powerful still. Uh, surprisingly, like the most broken abilities are still <laughs> pretty broken, right? And yeah, the fighting type is appealing for all the lightning type decks. That will be all from me today, guys. Um, Oceana International is starting up in a little bit. I will go ahead and um, edit these videos and upload them so that so that they are on the channel. I will show the list. Uh, Black Market has felt a bit gimmicky, honestly. Um, I feel like. It, Black Market would be stronger. Yeah, Black Market would be a lot stronger if you had Devoured Field as well. Yeah, because then you play Devoured Field and they counter it. And then you play Devoured Field and then they counter it. And then you play Black Market and then it's harder for them to counter it, which means the likelihood of it sticking is much higher. Yeah, so that would be my reasoning for probably adding another Stadium. Um, Field Lord has a lot of uses because there's a lot of escape ropes, but it the Field Lord could become a Devoured Field and then perhaps the third choice band, perhaps, but that's a very big perhaps, yeah? Um, or the Marsh Shadow, that's also a very big um, perhaps. But anyways, guys, that will be all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're watching YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And I will be seeing you guys uh, tomorrow for probably another um, pre-Oceana stream. Like, I'll try to be streaming before the Oceana tournament starts. Um, so you guys get to enjoy Pokemon 24-7. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. And until next time. Bye-bye.